something was about man. Here you see Mrs. Novas are here. Many Novas here. I think this document is going to be very useful. It's going to be put to practice to the extreme. That's what I believe. All right. Now the other C. Be the praise my Lord. That is the translation. Be praised my Lord. It was written by Saint Francis of Assisi in 2012, not 2012, 1282 in that period he was born. The canticle names the canticle of the sun or the canticle. Our biggest brother is sun. Yeah, our biggest sister is moon. It is a relational inclusion. Everything is included in the sense of uh, our relationship. Nothing is excluded. It's an integral, integral, everything is integral part of us. Everybody is integrally the work of life. Anyway, today I'm going to talk to you not in detail. What I'm going to do is just do some awakening. That's it. Such a document exists. That's it. You're going to plan it. That is the first chapter. The second chapter, Gospel of Creation. Pope is telling, see, why don't you open your eyes and see soil, water, air. See that small children's face. Look at the quality of life the humans are having. Look at the roads. Look at the noise pollution. Look at your own mental pollution. So far in the university, you have been teaching land pollution, water pollution, air pollution, noise pollution, light pollution. Now the sixth aspect is mental pollution. So examine and look at your own inner dimension. What you are doing. The second is look at the Bible, the Gospel of Jesus. You have been criticizing the church. What did the church neglected the responsibility of teaching his faith in how to relate with the earth? But when you read the first two chapters of Genesis, everything has been given to us. Yeah, everything. I mean, the Bible writers know that Bible is too big. We are not going to read it. Huge. So they gave it in two chapters. The whole Bible is summarized in the first two chapters. That's it. You read it, everything has been told how to relate to the earth. Amnesty International, International Monetary Fund, all of them, the structures, failed structures, they don't act in time. That is what Pope is writing. He is not happy about them. There are a variety of opinions, but there is no consensus. There is no one plan. So now Pope is telling dialogue and transparency is very important. We solve all kinds of problems, our ecological crisis, through dialogue and transparency. That's what he says in the first chapter. Okay, some of the great writings, only two or three paragraphs in each chapter, I've given you. You can read them in detail when you go to your room because I don't have time, you also don't have time. So for example, paragraph number 21, the earth, our home, is beginning to look more and more like an immense pile of filth. Folks, they don't use this kind of language. No encyclical has the word called filth. This is the first time Pope is using that word. I mean, it is like a bad word. In an encyclical, using film. In many parts of the planet, the elderly lament that once beautiful landscapes are now covered with rubbish. Folks will never use rubbish word either. But look at that. These two words tell you the, uh, the, the bad stuff that we have created. 22, you read it afterwards. In this paragraph, he's telling circular model of production. You 
same nature, trees, same leaves fall, next year same things, they take it up to produce new leaves. How come humanity doesn't know that? Uh, each time you produce car in India, and you next you throw them out, and then you send the ship to Australia, more iron ore you are supplying, and we tell you produce another car and throw it away. So, so throw away culture with all our intelligence, can't we go for a circular model of production like reusing, recycling, so on and so forth. So that is what the book is beautifully writing in this paragraph. He calls it circular model of production. That is the thing what humanity needs today. So if you read the paragraph later on, 41, this is the most beautiful paragraph. He talks about the coral reefs. You know, the coral is the most beautiful reefs you have, the Great Barrier Reef. Why not? Because of the carbonic acid, because you put carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it goes in, into the ocean, the carbon sink, and then the coral reefs are bleaching. Bleaching. Bleaching means the loss of color. They are dying. So, Pope Francis, writing on the loss of bio diversity, the paragraph number 41 writes as follows, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. In tropical and sub subtropical seas, we find coral reefs comparable to the great forest on dry land, for they shelter up approximately a million species, including fish, crab, mollusks, sponges, and algae. Many of the world's coral reefs are already barren, or in a state of constant decline. Who turned the wonderland of the seas into underwater cemeteries bereft of color and life? Very strong words. Only humans. It's not a snake. It's not a mosquito. It's not a dinosaur. Homo sapiens. That is us. He ends up the chapter with the painful words, the first chapter. After seeing everything, if we scan the regions of our planet, we immediately see that humanity has disappointed God's expectations. The second, he wants all of us to look at the Bible again. He says, reread, reinterpret, reconstruct. Because most of the theology we learned in the Catechism is anthropocentric. That is only what can be kept too little, isn't it? So, but today the whole two denominations, I would say all the two denominations have become Christian right now. Because they follow the Bible's way, God's commandment, Genesis 2 15. Delete and keep it. The second, the wisdom of the biblical accounts. The third, the mystery of the universe. What do you understand about the universe? What does science say about the universe? Very little. There is a lot of dark matter in the universe. Nobody knows. Mystery. So when you look natural world as a mystery, yes, God pops in. If you say, I know everything, there is no God. He is finished. So that's what human arrogance is all about. We know everything. So there is no place for God. But when you consider, I mean, you are a mystery to me. I am a mystery. What do you know about me? What do you know about Sam? What does he know about you? What does he know about your own daughter, your own son? What does he know? You don't know anything. Little you know, but you don't know everything. It's a mystery. When you see us a mystery, yes, that is a place for God. So that is what we have forgotten now. So that's why Pope is spending almost 76 to 80 paragraphs mystery of the universe. The message of each creature in the harmony of creation has intrinsic value. I mean, we see only instrumental value, okay? As long as they are useful, we value them. But other things like eucalyptus trees, that's value means 
you, you thank them. If they are of no value, you cut them off. As Jesus says, you know, <coughs> the wheat and the weeds. So they we pull out the weeds. But Jesus says, don't pull out the weeds. Let them grow. The wheat also let them grow. The weeds also let them grow. Everything has intrinsic value. We don't understand. Intrinsic value means every creature has right of existence. There are three rights God has given to them. To be, to flourish, to fulfill their role for the common good. To be, to flourish, to bring out their own young. Last point, to fulfill their role for the sake of the common good. These are fundamental rights. God himself. They suggest that human life is grounded in three fundamental and closely intertwined relationships with God, with our neighbor, and with the earth itself. According to the Bible, these three vital relationships have been broken both outwardly and within us. This rupture is sin. Yeah. Today, our focus is only on this way. The whole encyclical revolves around these three relationships. You need to keep them all the time in balance. You can't say, I love God, but I can't, I, I got difficulty with my neighbor father. No, no. You, if you have difficulty with your neighbor, your relationship with God is also no good. Remember that. If you are wasting water, if you are wasting energy, your relationship with God as well as human beings, no good. No good. All the three together they exist, like soil, water, air. In life and death, they exist together. Exactly the same way, this three relationship in life and death, we are bundled up together. 84, our resistance, insistence that each human being is an image of God should not make us overlook the fact that each creature has, has its own purpose. None is so the entire natural universe speaks of God's love. It is boundless affection for us. Soil, water, mountains, everything is as it were the colors of God. Here is the bumper sticker. You can make a bumper sticker out of that last sentence and give to everyone. Let them stick it behind the cars and uh, uh, motorcycles and even house doors. Ninety. You read it afterwards. This paragraph talks about some people think we are we are born with special rights. The first world, you remember, in those days, some 20 years ago, there were very, very crude distinctions in the world, first world, second world, third world, fourth world. So some people consider themselves they are born with the special rights. Yeah, they think like that. So that is what Pope is writing. Uh, see here, uh, we fail to see, sorry, uh, we should be concerned less than the living beings be treated irresponsibly. But we should be particularly indignant at the enormous inequalities in our midst, whereby we continue to tolerate some considering themselves more worthy than others. We fail to see that some are mired in desperate and degrading poverty with no way out, while others have not the faintest idea of what to do with their possessions. Vainly showing off their supposed superiority and leaving behind them so much waste, which if it were the case everywhere, would destroy the planet. In practice, we continue to tolerate that some consider themselves more human than others as if they had been born with greater rights. Among humanity, we should never consider that. We are all equals. We are all brothers and sisters. See, talking about other life forms, every act of cruelty towards any creature is contrary to human dignity. Everything is related. And we human beings are united as brothers and sisters on a wonderful pilgrimage woven together by the love of God 
and for each of his creatures, and which also unites us. Technology is good. Technological service is good, but technological dominion is bad. That is a big difference. Technological service is great, a good transportation, good aeroplane, green energy, also good equipment in the hospital for health. Now I am talking focus given that ah, it is for the life of Peter's job to come and blah blah blah. It is uh, Sam's job to blah blah. Oh, job, he has to write something, but I hang on to the opinion. That is for practical relativity. So we have 8 million uh, opinions about uh, doing things, about the reality. So in that way, we can't come to consensus, we can't act together. So that will be confusion. That's what he is talking about here. The need to protect employment. Employment is very important because the machines replace the work today in many countries. Biological technique, genetically modified food, is dedicated to almost seven paragraphs. If anybody wants to PhD, here is the resources. You can do your PhD right here. Chapter 3, Human Roots of Our Ecological Crisis, the last part is an excellent, excellent resource for PhD. Genetically modified food, he doesn't say it bad. He says, we are okay. So far, there is no conclusive evidence that it's harming all of us. So, Pope oh Francis is okay. It's all right. As long as it eliminates poverty and hunger, that's good. But so far, we don't know. We don't know. So here is a paragraph, under the file, he talks about technology, all right? You read afterwards, I don't have time, 107, all right? That is also about the, he talks about here, the environment. Uh, all right, I want to read the previous paragraph. It can be said that many problems of today's world stem from the tendency at times unconscious to make the methods and aim of science and technology and epistemological paradigm which shapes the lives of individuals and the workings of the society. The effects of imposing this model on reality as a whole, human and social, are seen in the deterioration of the environment. But this is just one sign of a reductionism which affects every aspect of human and social life. We have to accept that technology Technological products are not neutral, but they create a framework which ends up conditioning lifestyles and shaping social possibilities along the lines dictated by the interest of certain powerful groups. Decisions which may seem purely instrumental are in reality decisions about the kind of society we want to build. He ends the third chapter with a beautiful verse. He says, the ethic has been lost in human society. We lost our compass, we are trajectory. Human beings are defined, they are righteous people. So there is justice in our society. Ethics, values, very morals, very important for humans. But today, erosion of everything, erosion of ethical life, that is what the ecological crisis indicates, the erosion of ethical principles. That is what he concludes at the end of the third chapter. When technology disregards the great ethical principles, it ends up considering any practice whatsoever as explicit. As we have seen in the chapter, a technology severed from ethics will not easily be able to limit its own power. This is the solution again, judge is telling integral ecology. So far we have been dealing, that is the business as usual model, the environment is outside, okay? Outside the windows. Society is here and the economy is somewhere in uh, Canberra. That is how we rounded up, rounded, fragmented the society. The environment is separate, society is separate, and the uh, economy is separate. That's why we were plundering each other. When they are separate, we would like to plunder. 
So, environment is outside. So, for me, it's easy to plunder the environment. It's outside me. So, we plunder. Economy also plunders the poor people. And the economy supports the capitalistic nations. And also, economy plunders the environment because the economy thinks the environment is outside. But now, Pope is telling integral ecology is they are not three rounds anymore. They are only one round. Economy, society, and the environment, everything is inside. So when you are plundering the environment, you are digging your own grave. For yourself, all right? Uh, uh, folk talks about the ecosystem free services here. Any ecology professors here? Nobody? Yeah, ecosystem <laughs> free services. Look at that. Uh, once they become uh, all right, although we are often not aware of it, integral ecology, all right, we are all integral together. We depend on these larger systems for our own existence. We need only the eco how ecosystem interact in dispersing carbon dioxide, purify water, controlling illnesses and epidemics, forming soil, breaking down waste, and in many other ways which we overlook or simply do not know about. Once they become conscious of this, many people realize that we live and act on the basis of a reality which has previously been given to us, which precedes our existence and our abilities. So, when we speak of sustainable use, consideration must always be given to each ecosystem regenerative ability in its different areas and aspects. That's how we are connected to everything integral. We are one. The quality of life in cities has much to do with systems of transport, which are often a source of much suffering for those who use them. Many cars used by one or more people circulate in cities, causing traffic congestion, raising the level of pollution, and consuming enormous quantities of normal renewable energy. This makes it necessary to build more roads and parking areas, which spoil the urban landscape. Many specialists study on the need to give priority to public transportation. The last paragraph of the fourth chapter is, what kind of world do we want to leave to those who come after us, to children who are, who are now growing up? Yes. Now we are looking at the face of our future generations. 80% is already plundered. Our planet lost 80% of the resources. Only 20% remain. So what kind of world we are going to give to the future generations? Doomsday predictions can no longer be met with irony in this day. Yeah. You read afterwards. Chapter 5. Act. Lines of approach and action. Pope Francis is giving systematically. Today, world leaders need not worry at all. United Nations need not worry framing everything even spending dollars to create some solutions already they are here. Actually, United Nations, they are using this part. Every, even Canberra is using here, this part. Every 220 nations are using this part as a blueprint for their uh, renewal of the environment. So the first is dialogue of the environment with the international community. All right. For all the United Nations conventions like Kyoto, Rio, Copenhagen, and Durban, uh, Paris, lately in Glasgow, Scotland, all of them are failure. Francis, Francis, Pope Francis brands them failure, but he appreciates Stockholm Summit, Basel Summit, Vienna Summit, Montreal Summit. These summits are very, very productive. He appreciates smaller things before. If it is really feasible and then you allow it. If it gives you jobs, if it doesn't pollute the area, you can otherwise stop it. Ask them to take and put that factory just behind his own house. So that is what we have rejected. 201. The majority of people living on our planet profess to be believers. This should spur religions to dialogue among themselves for the sake of protecting nature, defending the poor, and building networks of respect and fraternity. This is the last uh, chapter, act again. 
He calls for a new lifetime. Many things have to change, folks. But it is we human beings above all who need to change. We lack an awareness of our common origin, of our mutual belonging, and of a future to be shared with everyone. The basic awareness would enable the development of new convictions, attitudes, and forms of life. A great cultural, spiritual, and educational challenge stands before us, and it will demand that we set out on a long path of a new world. A change in lifestyle will bring healthy pressure. We need to change our lifestyle in order to save the environment. On those who wield political, economic, and social unable to work the same off.